All right, here's quiz five solutions for math 60. Um, basically just one prop, well, there's four problems, let's be honest. Um, we're given four different linear equations here and asked to solve them all. Okay. Um, I think the first two, well, let's just do it. So on this first one, I prefer to move the x's first. So what I mean by that is if I looked at this problem, what I would do is either subtract 3x from both sides or subtract 4x from both sides. I choose to subtract 3x from both sides because I like to keep everything positive. And if I had subtracted 4x from both sides, I would have ended up with a negative number of x's over here. So the way I would do this, although there's lots of different ways, is to first subtract 3x from both sides, which gets me to this stage, and then add 5 to both sides. And what that tells me is that 7 is equal to x. Lots of different ways you can do this. But if you do everything perfectly, you should end up with 7 as your answer. Uh, kind of similarly on this next one here, I got x's on this side and x's on this side. But if I choose to add 2x to both sides of the equation, things will work out a little bit nicer. I'll end up with a positive coefficient on my x term um, on the, I guess I'm doing this in the right color. On the right hand side, I'll just have negative 10. But on the left, negative x plus 2x, so this is negative 1 plus 2 gives me positive 1x, and now I have a positive 1 as my coefficient on x. So to get x all by itself, all I got to do is subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. If you subtract 2 from both sides of the equation, what you're left with is x equals negative 12. And that's the solution to this linear equation. Um, if you feel like it, you could check your answers by plugging them back in. I could change this x into a 7. 3 times 7 is 21, plus 2 is 23. 4 times 7 is 28, minus 5 is also 23. Same idea down here, 2 minus negative 12, same as 2 plus 12, which is 14. Negative 2 times negative 12 is positive 24, and 24 minus 10 is also 14. Anyways, moving on. Um, C and D, same basic idea, but what you'll see is there's one more step at the end. I have 2x over here and negative 2x over here. So if I add 2x to both sides of the equation, I won't be left with any x's on the right. I'll only have this negative 4. But on the left, I now have 4x. And I still have the plus 4. Um, so if I want to get the x all by itself, let's get rid of this positive 4 first by subtracting 4 from both sides of the equation. Uh, be a little bit careful here. Negative 4 minus 4 more. That's not 0. That's negative 8. Um, so I got 4x equals negative 8. If I divide both sides of the equation by 4, I get x is negative 8 fourths. In other words, negative 2. So negative 2 would be my final answer. Um, finally, this last problem, same basic idea as part C. See, I got negative 2x here and positive 3x here, so I'm going to choose to add 2x to both sides of the equation. And if I do that, I will have 5x left over here and still have this positive 5. And on the right, all I have left is the 4. So if I wanted to get the 5x all by itself, I could subtract 5 from both sides of the equation. And if I did so, what I'd be left with is 5x on this side and negative 1 on this side, positive 4 minus 5 gives me negative 1. So now to get x all by itself, I can divide both sides by 5. If you do negative 1 divided by 5, what you're left with is negative 1 fifth. You leave your answer just like that and call that good. Um, so that is the end of the quiz.